Do you like movies and games also? Listen so much more, they all know. Vice, Pyro, Lotus, and friends. Welcome to Corrective Consciousness. Welcome to Corrective Consciousness, episode 65, the podcast about our lives and love of pop culture. I am your host, Vice the Bold, and this is Lotus Prince. And Pyro Jack Frost. So, uh, another week without old man Stompy stomping it up over in Japan. Yeah. Yes, it's his turn now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny that a lot of us ended up going to Japan, even though not at the same time for whatever well, reason. Well, it's funnier because uh, I guess we can start by saying that Mr. Ryu wanted us to all go at one time because he was going anyway for the Miku concert, let's say. Yeah. And everyone was like, yeah, sure, let's go. But then I was like, uh, I'm sorry, guys, but I already made plans with my girlfriend and her family to go like the week after that. And then, I don't know about all of you guys, but it seemed like your plan ended up falling through, or yeah, just the timing I wasn't mean, right. The, 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 the time, timing wasn't right The me. timing was awful, because it the, the concert took place over the first two days of my class mm. in the semester. It's, it's kind of... It, it's pushing it to miss the first day of class, but the first two, like, I, I really couldn't <laughs> get away with that, because I only meet yeah. three days a week. Yeah, it would have been better for, like, the summer or spring break yeah, or something. It, it was yeah. so mm-hmm. frustrating because I really I've wanted to go to Japan for years now, and now we finally get a chance. And it's like, if it were one week earlier, there would have been no problem at all. I I think trips in general are hard for. I mean, I don't know about in banking, but at least in education, like yeah, vacation is yeah. really annoying because yeah, I can't you, just there say, are certain oh, I'm times taking you, a day off. I'll see you later. Like yeah, there are certain days you can't miss. Yeah, and then the days that you can miss, let's say the times that you can go is either expensive or crowded as hell when you want to go to that place, just mm-hmm. because that's when everyone can go. Yep. Well, I, I, I'm a salesperson, and any amount of time you are missing is bad. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. So, uh, yeah, it, it's not... Um, it, you have to take off, though. It, it's one of those things. It's like, if I don't take off, then I'm going to be miserable. So it, mm-hmm. you have to give yourself some time off and yeah. some time to be with your fa- family and friends. So... Without any further ado, we should move on, though. Yeah. Sure. All right. So, so take us yeah, I'll start. Uh, I've been continuing Grand Blue Fantasy, which, again, is that mobile game I've been playing. Uh, I play a lot of mobile games, uh, as you all know, um, but I feel like very often they are not necessarily short-lived, but a lot of mobile games don't seem to have enough content for someone who doesn't want to pay much money. Yeah. Um, so I fall off them rather quickly, let's say, like a, f- a few weeks, and then I've basically exhausted the game without having to pay money or grind, like, incessantly. You've basically had all the fun that you can possibly have with the game, you know? Yeah. Like, you've seen everything it had to offer, you know? Yeah, but I feel that Grand Blue is a little bit different, and this could just be... I'm just speaking highly of it because I'm playing it currently, but it feels like they give you a lot of stuff for free, and there's a lot to do, and... Like, the ge- the past game that I was playing was annoying because the only grinding I did was basically turn my phone on overnight and have it grind itself. <laughs> and there wasn't really much for me to do, let's say, other than that, because the grinding was just fighting normal battles over and over again. But in Grand Blue, at least, I'm not to the grinding point yet. But from what I can tell, the grinding is... There's a lot more you can be grinding, so it's a lot more involved. So I'm hoping that might keep me in longer. Also, I just feel like I'm more obsessed with the world and characters um but yeah so i'm gonna keep going on that uh we'll see how that goes i've also been continuing danganronpa uh i've beat i beat the third case this week or i should say third class trial Mm -hmm. uh, which had a very interesting twist i will say that after the first two when i was a little like uh this is just the same thing over again let's say um there was some big twists and i I hate to say this because it makes me sound like a dick, but the punishment, you know how at the end of every class trial, yeah. there's a punishment for the, the blackened sure. that you catch? Mm-hmm. Uh, the one in the, in the class trial three was somewhat amusing. Oh. Like, I know that you could say some of them are funny in their own rights, the but this one... The ones in the one, first one were pretty kind of, uh, were kind of funny. I thought. Yeah, but yeah. I would say like they're, they're still gruesome, but it's like yeah. kind of like, I was watching this one, I'm like, ooh, oh, uh, and then I'm like, what? Wait, what? 
<laughs> and I was just like cracking up and I showed my girlfriend and she was like, what are you showing me at first? And then, cause well, she's watched the whole first one with, uh, she watched the let's play that Lotus and I did, mm-hmm. uh, but she watched this class, try this uh, punishment. And at the end she was laughing too. Like, what was that? Like it was, it was really silly. Hmm. Um, but it's actually getting a little interesting. Like I said, other than the class trials, the story is pretty cool. Um, hopefully before next week, next podcast, I can beat the fourth class trial and just give a little update on that as well. But um, other than that, it's it's fun. The co- class trials are more the same. And I, uh, I'm looking forward to the end because I still... My assumption as to how it goes could still possibly be right so i kind of want to see if i'm right sure see i i really really want to go back to and play two because i i uh i really fell off um that one in a, in a large way i think i i got to like the third or fourth class trial so that was a fair a bit uh, a bit of time in mm-hmm. so like i i feel like i should have kept with it but for for one reason or another i got distracted and i haven't played my psp in, or my my vita in forever so uh i think i need i just need to go back to it i, I, need to I would recommend because they're long games unless you actually want to play it again like watch a let's play up to the point you're at yeah then you won't have to be bogged down by all the meandering around and whatever you, you might do if you're playing it on your own and then you can catch up to where you are and then basically continue like you never left off yeah, the only the only thing I'm majorly worried about is I forget like the mechanics of mm. uh, the trial. Oh, well, I guess so. watching it would help with that. Yeah. And it's it's not too punishing in the sense that yeah, like, you if lose. you forget, then yeah, and even if you really get a deal. game over, you start at the beginning of the class trial like nothing happened, so it's not that big of a deal. Sure. Um, and then the other game I've been playing still, which. I'm very close to stopping playing, like I mentioned I would, is Divinity Original Sin, which, again, is like a Baldur's Gate kind of game. Uh, it's made by uh, Lorian Entertainment or something like that. It was a Kickstarter game. Um, it's <sighs> My problem with CRPGs, I think they used to be called, for like campaign RPGs, mm-hmm. is the same as tactical RPGs. Like I love the idea of them. And whenever I look at them, I'm like, oh, these characters look cool. Oh, this like seems really fun. And... Oh, it's like D&D, but on my computer or tactics games, it's like, oh, this job system is amazing or whatever it is. But I get into it and then like 20, 10, 20 hours in and I'm, I don't feel like I'm making much progress, whether or not I understand the mechanics of the game. And it's just way too much micromanagement that yeah. I get kind of tired of it because, again, like my mm. time is limited. And I can't be playing these long games anymore. My yeah. my my big thing is like I, I I was into the Etrian Odyssey games. Yes, and then definitely I, long games. I, I I like those, but uh, once I got to the second one, the first one was was a long game, but it it at least wasn't too bad with um with like if the party that you made in the beginning, generally if it was well balanced, it would have served you well. Mm-hmm. But in the second one, they really make you master each of the classes, and oh. like, like, and, and as time goes on in the in the in the series, you kind of need to have people that you uh, like shuffle in and out of your main party and and continue mm-hmm. to level up. And I I hate that notion <laughs> of hey, I didn't spec right for the yep. way that the one yeah. game expected me to you just guess. play the game the way like you want to play it. You know? Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's the whole purpose of like. D and D type games is that they they're supposed to be open ended, right? Yeah. You know, like like. like the, eh. I was starting to play Final Fantasy Tactics again, and I felt the same way. Like I wanted to have this class of people, this or these these like each people that had these certain classes, and I wanted to be able to play like how I wanted to play. But like the third battle, the third story battle is like cheap as shit. It's the first battle that you encounter black mages, and black magic. Black magic decimates your party, especially if you aren't paying attention to the, all the mechanics. Because if you have very, if your characters have very high faith, which is like not really a stat, it's really weird. You have to look up the mechanics to really understand. But there's like faith and bravery. Bravery are two things that are that are de- independent of your stats. They're basically randomly generated at character creation and stay that value for the whole game. If your faith value is very high. 
you do a lot of magic damage, but also you take a lot of magic magic damage. Mm. And I think I wasn't really paying attention to that, so my characters just get owned by magic, and it's really annoying. And I, I just can't beat that battle. And I'm like, you know what? I just no matter how much I love Final Fantasy Tactics, and I, I beat it once, so it's not like I can't do it. So I don't want to have to worry about this right now because I don't want to yeah. grind all these random battles so I can beat this battle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah and the same thing happened to me in Fire Emblem. I'm just like, ugh. Like, I, I, I'm worried about my characters constantly dying. I'm like, ah. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's such a pain in the butt. Yeah, and like, in, in my case, I have options, and I took them, but that's why I play The Witcher on easy mode instead of where I have to constantly mm. make potions and be aware of what enemies are in what areas, which you can look up in in-game books and then prepare for them that way. Like, you're going to want anti-fire magic in such and such an environment, and you're going to want anti-poison potions in such and such a place. And, like, it's cool if you want to do that, but I really don't feel like doing any of that. I just want to click my yeah. way through the game, like, with just yeah, melee if, style. <laughs> if Final Fantasy Tactics had an easy mode, I'd take that. Yeah. But it's like with, um, and then Divinity, back to the original comment, like, the the system is really cool because there's, like, four elements, and they each can have persistent effects, uh, like clouds or puddles let's say like you could have a puddle of water and if your character steps in it they get wet which means they take more air damage because that's usually lightning and thunder Mm -hmm. or uh if you have if you are standing uh in a poison cloud you take poison damage but if someone casts fire in there the poison cloud explodes it does more damage the problem is i'm on like the first area and all the enemies have this as well (laughs) so i was actually we i had to leave to go somewhere yesterday and I was like, you know what? Let me finish this battle first. I'm almost done. I finish it. One of my characters dies because, like, there's these poison, these zombie hogs, and when you hit them, they spew poison. Yeah. And I forgot that uh, I also had like a fire weapon, let's say. So when I killed it, it exploded, and the character that attacked it died. Oh my god! And I'm like, this is stupid. Uh, but I have a resurrect, so I'll resurrect it. I resurrected the person, and because there was still poison and fire in that area. There's another explosion, and the <laughs> character died again. And I'm like, wait a second. I-, I don't know, and I wasn't thinking, and I resurrected her again. And the same thing happened, and I had no more resurrect like scrolls. And I'm like, so this past half hour I spent beating this battle and being late to this party I had to go to was meaningless. Yeah. And that was kind of like the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back in a way. I'm just like, you know what? Nope. I, I Maybe I'll try it again like t- tonight or tomorrow, but I, I think that's it. Yeah, and again, because the game's long too, just like tactics games. So I, I need to stop just playing games because I like the idea of them, and more play the games because I know that I can finish them. There you go. Uh, but also, the last thing I want to mention is my girlfriend actually started playing a game recently, and she started playing Near Automata. Nice, nice. Uh, which is a game that I've been wanting to play, and now that she she bought it, so she owns it, so now I have a reason to play it because uh, she's thinking of cosplaying as the main character. Mm-hmm. at magfest so um she seems to be having a lot of fun with it she's not really much of a gamer like the really the only games that she's played uh a lot of are the kingdom hearts games and sum sum on her phone mm-hmm. uh so it's it's i am actually really excited that she's playing a game and ha- like has a game that she's really into nice so it's kind of funny i was talking to my parents the other day and i'm like i'm turning i'm turning her into another me and they're like "Uh oh (laughs) (laughs) oh no Uh, but overall that's been my week um i had a board game party yesterday but they're probably all games that i've mentioned before so lotus why don't you take it from here sure uh first thing i'll mention is a real quick one by the time people are hearing this podcast the undertale let's play should be fully available uh, for everyone, so the um, the normal end of the game has already been uploaded and made public, but at this point, on the Tuesday part 19, the conclusion should be up where we get the, uh, the proper pacifist ending, so you get to see a complete Undertale Let's Play that does not have the, the horrible path and horrible ending, which I hear... You did both? I did normal, or you just did pacifist. I did normal and pacifist. I did not do okay. the genocide ending, and I hear that's a, a genuine like feels bad like ending. <laughs> All right, do you plan on trying it? I don't think so. Not really. Maybe I'll YouTube it or something. But so the 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 
um, conceit that I heard is that you have to beat it on norm uh, for the normal ending first, and then the pacifist. I think so, and that's what I did anyway. Yeah. Um, so genocide, you actually just like kill kill right? everyone. No, genocide, you're a piece of shit. Yeah, like and it and it gets depressing too because like you level up as you kill people, but like after a point, the enemies like are zero threat or like start actively trying to avoid you so like you really are going out of your way to be a dick you are the bad guy um and it really feels bad when you cake out like uh named characters because a lot of them really don't want to be fighting you or even if they do they're not really fighting with the intent to kill but you are and it's just like oh man and like from what uh old man stompy told me after you get good at the genocide run there's only really two fights in the game that are genuinely hard. So all of us, like, because things get easier and easier, and all of a sudden you hit a wall, and you're like, oh, okay. And then there's the boss that you only fight on the genocide run, Uh, because most characters you fight no matter what, but there's one boss that only appears on the genocide run, and I've seen bits of gameplay of that fight, and my god, that thing is no joke. That boss is like... Kind of like 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 the gatekeeper to the end of the game. It's just like oh no. So it's kind of like the enemies start being afraid of you, and you get like yeah, overpowered. And, but then the final boss makes up for the fact that all these enemies you're steam running. Yeah, steam there, rolling there, there's over. like a mid boss that all of a sudden puts real effort into defending mm. everybody from you. But then you take that person out, and then the game's a joke again. And all of a sudden, that last boss, like or I don't know if it's the last, but one of the last at least. All of a sudden, that that one is just like, oh my god, <laughs> and like you get to see just how crazy this person can be when, uh, when when it actually tries, because like th- this is a character you've interacted with where you know there's something up with this character, but I guess I'll let it slide, you know. But when the character actually tries fighting you, it's like, oh god, help me. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm not doing that route. Uh, just I just have like the the the, the wholesome, good for you ending uh Mm -hmm. otherwise another game i concluded was uh fatal frame maiden of black water i'd mentioned that i'd been recording that for a let's play and i've finished recording it so at this point nice yeah feels good now now i've caught up with the fatal frame games unless you count spirit camera so i do shit so at at this point (laughs) so, so at this point i've um played them out of order don't care yeah <laughs> Medium of blackwater will not go up until i'm capable of getting a recordable 3ds god damn it i don't care how many years it takes all right but um <laughs> but yeah Medium of blackwater i beat the game uh i gotta start editing that now so i, I kind of look forward to doing that and um i did not get every single ghost in the game or every single notebook you know little files you could find but I got the vast majority, and I did get every costume for every character, and I did get every ending. There are three characters you play as. One of them has two endings, the second one has two endings, and the third one has four endings. Uh, the only thing that's wow. frust- the only thing that's frustrating is you gotta play like the whole chapter they're in to get back up to those points, and it's a long chapter because it's the big like all three of you are playable in this chapter because normally you only control one character per chapter so it's just like oh okay but um it's pretty cool uh and uh the game again has creative boss fights and actually a new mechanic i forgot if i mentioned this before but when you beat a ghost and it does that little animation where it's like fading away and it's like oh no and it's thrashing around one more time you can actually walk up to them and reach out and grab at them. Like it does the animation like you're grabbing an item where you slowly extend your hand. And when you mm. t- and when you touch the ghost, you do this thing called glancing, which you can kind of like see some of their last thoughts. So with these ghosts, you see how they died. And surprise, surprise, usually it really sucks because <laughs> it's, wow. fa- it's a fatal frame game. And I I'm mean, pretty and- sure that's why they became ghosts is because they died in some... Not yeah, usually. Manner. Like, in every Fatal Frame game, every ghost you see, you know was, like, murdered. Uh, but this time, you really actually get to see how it played out. Whereas, mm. in previous games, you were kind of at the mercy of whatever cutscenes the games happened to show you. But with this, every ghost type in the game, you're like, let me see what your history is. Um, but because they have that as a mechanic, there are only, like, 40 ghosts in the game. 
And that sounds like a lot to have cutscenes for, and it is. But for like for the Ghostpedia, or no, I forget, I forgot what the number was. was Ghostpedia. That's actually what it's called in the Fatal Frame in all the games. I, no, I forgot. It was it was either twenty eight ghosts or forty ghosts. It was something like that. But like that is nothing compared to what previous Fatal Frame games have had. But the thing is, they kind of had the same amount as previous Fatal Frame games. Normally, if you wanted to complete your uh, your Ghostpedia. There would be the enemies you fight, but there would also be just as you play the game, all of a sudden you'd see like a mysterious figure walking through the hallway for like a second. You'd be have to be, like whip out your camera, be like ah, oh, and take a quick picture before it's gone, and that as counts as an entry. Those ghosts still appear in Maiden of Black Water, but they're just not part of your Ghostpedia. They're they're just not. Mm. Um, they they'll give you points, but they're not an entry. So it actually before I knew that it was kind of bugging me at first because I was looking at my Ghostpedia and I'm like. Well, I see the cutscene ghosts when I glance them, but where are all the others? Like, I can't find an entry for them, and there just is none. So there are more ghosts than they have entries for. But, yeah, I guess it's just how it is. Like, if you feel like going for those, then have fun. But but seriously, there are 40 ghosts or whatever. So that admittedly does make game completion way easier. Uh, Sounds like it. Way easier. Also, the ability to uh, replay chapters is fantastic because normally if you like like this this is the first game in the series that has not done this there are not new game plus ghosts because normally to complete your ghostpedia you had to beat the game and then beat the game again assuming you were perfect both times but with this everything is in the chap like everything is in the, the first time you play the chapters and if you missed something you can replay whatever chapter you want which is quite convenient I mean, the downside is you don't get to see weird new ghosts in a new game plus, but that's a relatively small price to pay. At least it's not making you go through the whole grinding process, like, mandatorily. So, so that's Fatal Frame. Um, also, this is something I was very happy to have finally gotten the opportunity to stream, but, uh... This is a game for the Wii that Vice showed me years ago, and I was like, what is this? Uh, Target Terror for the Wii. It's this game is phenomenal. It's hilarious. It sounds dumb. Oh, it, it is. is. So, so here's the thing, uh, Pyro, you, you know those old rail shooters like uh, Lethal Enforcers? You mean like Pokemon Snap? Yeah, exactly like Pokemon Snap. No, but like, no, no, no. You know it's, Lethal it's Enforcers... Area 51. Yes. yes. Area 51. Yeah, yeah, so you know how you're going through, like, weird old CG environments with, like, real-life mocap actors? Like, mm -hmm. old, like even though they don't have any lines, it still feels like they're overacting. And you have, like, the stupid melee ones that pop up from the bottom of the camera and hit you with an axe or something. And it's like... And they're yeah. basically wearing, like, costumes that they made in some warehouse. Yeah, yeah, they, like... yeah, they just got, like, some cool clothes from their dresser drawers and put on sunglasses like dicks and just started fighting you. <laughs> um, so that's the Lethal Enforcers. Well, the thing is, like, you can play some games like that now. Like, Mad Dog McCree. Like, it was made for, like, the Sega CD, but it was re-released on the Wii in the 2000s. Well, Target Terror was actually made in, like... 2005 2006 and it was released on the wii in like 2007 2008 but it's just like those old stupid 90s games like on purpose well, it, it, it it's actually made by like the same guy it's made by like, oh. eugene jarvis um like the guy who made cruising usa and all the cruising games and mm. now he like makes all of the, like the snow cross games and like all the games that feel like they're cruising usa games because they basically are uh, yeah, and like successor. the game totally embraces the cheese, and it's just as dumb as the older <laughs> game. Like one of my favorite parts he of the whole. He seems to have a love for FMV bullshit. Yeah, like one of my favorite. One of my favorite. Parts, as that makes it so good, though. One of my yeah. favorite parts of the uh, the main campaign is uh, there's this one part where you're like going through the airport, and like for whatever reason you decide to go into the, like the bathroom. I guess you're scanning everywhere for these nasty terrorists who are just a, like, the same four people in different costumes. And uh, when you go into the bathroom, there are four people in a row up against the urinals, and all of a sudden, all four of them turn around, and one of them is a civilian, the other three are terrorists, and they start shooting at you. And stuff like that just cracks me up, because it's like, they just totally were ignoring the civilian, and the civilian was ignoring just them. Just ignored them. <laughs> it, it, it's yep. stuff like that, like, they could, oh, could only exist in a video game. And, and then you also start checking the stalls. The first stall just has a dude in it who is for some reason waiting for you in the bathroom stall, and he starts firing at you, so you gotta kill him. The second stall is some <laughs> guy sitting on the toilet with a newspaper, and he's looking at you like, oh, like, like, you know, don't shoot that person. And the third stall is another guy sitting, 
but if you look close, you can see he has a gun. He starts aiming at you and shooting like he was like fooling you. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's like, the greatest game. What the, also the best part about this game though is the mini game. Well, no, I, I'll say there's there, there's two there's two best parts, and one of them is the mini games. I will get to that. But the other thing <laughs> is, you know how with games like uh, like in the arcade, the actual arcade, you know how like House of the Dead or whatever, all these games support like two players, like time mm-hmm. right? And you know how sometimes if you're like ah to hell with it, I want an unfair advantage, you might put coins in both player slots like both coin slots as you can so do you can wheels do john woo style oh yeah 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 like the yeah. game the game thinks you're playing with two players so you're not going to get that ultimate high score because you're competing with yourself but fuck it right i just want to get to the end of the game well target terror has an option called justice mode where mm. it allows a single player to dual wield like it knows <laughs> it's so funny to me also the fact that it's called justice mode so if, if you own the wii game and you want to just play as a single player with two wii motes Go for it. Nobody's stopping you. It's not even unlockable. Like, when you start the game, you can just do it. It's in the options menu. It's fantastic. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Um, Now, yeah, and as Vice was saying, the mini games. I'm not going to tell what all of them are. I actually uploaded a video that was called Best Mini Games Ever. Uh, <laughs> and it's just, it's just all nine mini games. So the thing with this game is... Um, you may or may not know how to get the mini games. Usually it's like break you have to X find them. Yeah, like usually it's like break X number of windows or destroy X number of explosive barrels or destroy this or that, like how many numbers of this. But like if you don't know it, it's hysterical because like you're in the airport and there's windows and glass everywhere and you're firing <laughs> wildly at terrorists, you're probably missing sometimes or maybe you just feel like breaking the environment and all of a sudden just the game comes to a screeching halt. Like the screen goes black and it goes like 15 windows destroyed and you're just playing a mini game. And then when you beat the mini game or lose, whatever, it just takes you exactly back to where you were. And like, I hope you remember where the enemies were if there were any on screen because they're just no waves. Like, ah, it just, it snaps you out and back in. But the mini games themselves are legendary because they're like really stupid fmv stuff yep. like there's there's one that's like <laughs> ski, there's one that's like um like clay pigeon shooting except like that that's the theme but instead like you, you're looking at over like a tall grassy field and terrorists pop up out of it and they throw turkeys with bombs <laughs> attached to them and you have to shoot them out of the air before they hit <laughs> you uh there's another one where there's a map of the united states and you're trying to get the most electoral college votes versus the computer or, or, or you could do it with two players, but yeah, so you're firing at as many States as possible and covering it with paint and the other players doing the same. And you could fire over each other's paint. It's like, it's almost like Splatoon before Splatoon. Um, wow. And like the, the it's the, actually the prequel to, to Splatoon. Yeah. No, the, the best, the best part though, is that if you lose against the computer, cause it'll either say like red player becomes president or blue player becomes president. But if you're playing by yourself and you lose against the computer, the little newspaper thing does that thing where it spins in and shows the headline. Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh, Americans elect machine for president. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. <laughs> it's like, yes. It's so good. There's a quick draw mechanic, like in um, like in Mad Dog McCree, where you have to beat Kid Terror, who's just wearing like a bandito mask and like a cowboy hat. It's dumb as shit. Like, you were expecting weapons of mass destruction, but instead you find only death and he quick draws. I'm like, what is this stupid line? Like, the, the game's the best. And I'm not going to tell you what the best minigame is because you need to look is up... Is that one the, my favorite? It's the one you showed me. and went out of your way yes. to show me. It's the best <laughs> game. It's called, um, I think, Golden Terror, I believe. Just, I'm oh, telling yeah. I'm telling you. Go, go to YouTube, look up best, period. Minigames, period. Ever, period. Like, on my channel... Oh wow, you are in for a treat! Like yeah. Golden Terror, the last mini game on that list. I'll, I'll tell you that it involves golf, but whatever you're thinking, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing about that was that it was the first mini game I encountered. It was yeah. all downhill from there because yeah. it was fucking great. <laughs> I, f- I got a. I think my first one was a turkey toss, so it was actually largely uphill from there. Um, the, the acid dunk one is also pretty good because it plays this dramatic music, but it's, everything is stupid. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's great because the fact that it's FMV, like mocap people, but with very, very obviously like computer generated everything else is just funny to me. 
Yes. Um, same goes for when you start a level. Like, the news reporter's just like, oh, terrorists are holding up the airport. We're going to go live. But, like, she's clearly in front of a mediocre CG green screen. Like, it's so, like, even if you don't know anything about green screens, you're like, something about that doesn't look quite right. Like, it's it's, it's amazing. And they know what they were doing. Um, also, you may not have known this. Spice, did you ever beat the game? No. Yeah, you, <laughs> you may not have known this then, but it's one of those games that pulls the dick move, like, at the last second, you can get the good or the bad ending. Oh. Um, and, like, but, you, but you're but you probably not aware that you can mess this up unless you just straight up lose. So, like, you can kind of get... It's still a game over. It's not really a bad ending, but it's very, very easy to get a game over, even if you think you know what you're doing. You kind of have to look at it twice. The good news is the game will let you play the level again instead of the entire game again, but... That's good. It took me many tries to even learn what I was doing wrong because, like... You have to shoot the right, like, thing for it to work. Um, gotcha. But I I uploaded the entire uh, stream plus me getting the ending right on YouTube as well. Like, Target Terror full stream or whatever. I actually did two streams because the first one I was like, let's just show you the game. But I got to nearly the end. So I'm like, ah, I'll stream it again. I'm going to beat it this time. <laughs> so I have, <laughs> I, have, I have two Target Terror streams. Uh, the last thing I want to mention real briefly is... Um, I was actually able to see Mr. Ryu again, and we watched Made in Abyss some more. So I'm something like seven or eight episodes in out of 13 episodes, which is apparently halfway through where the scanlations are in the manga right now. Man, that show's getting captivating. Although, sure enough, it got... I said it was really lighthearted in episodes one and two, and the characters are still mostly generally lighthearted, but, like, yeah, like, like the show itself is no joke. Like, they're... It's basically, like, I think I already told you last time, it was, like, it's basically a dungeon crawler video game, except it's an anime, so they're (laughs) trying to actually descend into the abyss, and there's been talk, like, the deeper you go, the worse off it is for you if you try leaving, like, you know, if a little kid goes to, like, level two of the abyss and comes back out, she's gonna be, like, shaking and, like, vomiting, and, like, it just affects you really badly, if you go down to, like, level five there's a good chance you could die and if you go down to like level six or seven even as an adult just don't come back because you won't survive the trip (laughs) and it's just like Hmm. well and the whole plot of this show or the premise at least is that the main character's uh mother is supposedly at the bottom of the abyss with a note that says like i'm waiting for you there so she's like ah so like they're gonna try navigating the abyss so we'll see where that goes but just like a video game the deeper you go like, also, the scarier it gets. Like, the more and more intense giant freaking monsters you see. Like, one of the first monsters we saw is actually genuinely fucked up. Like, it, it, it works like an angler fish. Like, you know how an angler has... No, better example. I have, like, three examples. Like, you know how an angler fish has a light, but it's not really a light. It's attached to a mm-hmm. giant monster. Did, did you guys ever play Devil May Cry 4? Uh, oh, yes, really. I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that was the coolest. Okay, so, Vice, there was one boss that... You see these two, like, nymphs. They're, like, glowing nymphs floating around and spinning and dancing. And Dante's like, okay! So he kind of starts hanging out with them. Or, like, I guess Nero does as well. But then you see they're the angler bait and they're attached to this giant frog monster that just is Mm -hmm. about to eat you. And you're like, oh, shit! So it's, like, an angler for humans. Like, that was a really creepy concept. Oh, wow. So, that is cool. So in um in Made in Abyss, there's a monster that can use a duck call, except for humans. It's genuinely twisted. It's called a corpse weeper because, like, um, do you remember in the end of Evangelion, like the movie, the end of Evangelion, remember those large white creatures with horrible mouths that were attacking Asuka? Yeah. Not so much for the total look, but the color scheme reminded me of it, and the fact that it has red-tipped wings, and there's lots of them, and it's just like, ugh. But the first time you encounter this thing, you hear, like, some person being killed, shouting, like, help me! And they're like, oh, boy, we better look into this. And you see, sure enough, you see a creature that's been, like, devouring some human, but he's clearly dead. But this, the corpse feeder's gimmick is that it takes the latest victim it killed and uses their cries for help as a duck call for other humans and it's like fuck this and this was on like level like one or two like we haven't even seen the bad stuff yet like adults regularly as like an exercise go to floors one or two so what the fuck is like 
the part that nobody knows about. Like, are you kidding me with this? So uh, I'm quite curious to see uh, where this adventure takes us. Unfortunately, I'm probably like five or six episodes away from the end of the season. And like, you know, God only knows when the next season is going to come out. So I might actually have to pick up the manga. But it's really captivating so far. I'm enjoying it. So, um, yeah, so that's been my week. How about you, Vice? Well, uh, I got on a little bit more uh, game playing than usual. I've been trying to make it a point to play a little bit more. Uh, just so I can wind down and take it easy um, mm-hmm. in my downtime during work. So um, I've been playing a lot of the games that I uh, I have set out to do. I, I've been becoming better at not buying uh, games when I uh, have others to play. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, proud of you. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, it only took me, uh, what, 31 years, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, to learn my lesson, like I, I, this week, I had a strong urge to go pick up the like the latest Uncharted game because I love the Uncharted games, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna play that, and then I was like, I'm playing Far Cry Four right now. I should just continue to play Far Cry Four. Yeah, like mm-hmm. unless it's a collector's edition, that's exactly why I wait well, because I know it's gonna be a while before I play it, and I may as well get it when it's cheaper. <laughs> well, at least with it's not as bad with other series. Like at least with the Uncharted games, I've beaten them all except for the the, the Vita one. Yeah. Um. So like I've beaten all the mainline games. Um. So like. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't too down on it, but I was like, ah, that's like, that's a game that's going to be around for a while. I'll be able to buy a physical copy Exactly. Yep. Like the like big, triple, really long like the big triple A blockbuster. Like you really think they're going to get scarce. Like it's like Grand Theft Auto five. Like, yeah, everyone snatched it up on day one, but then they made about a billion more. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not particularly worried about it. Um, so, uh, like I said, I'm playing Far Cry 4. Uh, I am really uh, happy with the uh, variety of the missions hmm. in the game. Uh, there are a lot of different mission types. Uh, that seems to be the big um, improvement over the last game. It is an incremental approve- improvement. Like, Far Cry 3 was, like, leagues um, better than Far Cry 2, like, just in terms of design and things like that and what you can mm-hmm. do in it. Um, but... Uh, Far Cry 4 is very much uh, the sequel to Far Cry 3. You know, like, it's... Oh. It's it's um, it's very... It has the same structure as Far Cry 3 does. Let's okay. just put it that way. Um, but, you know, it still has that Ubisoft, like, um, structure uh, for an open world game where you have to go and liberate a tower, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and open up a, a section of, of map. I mean, e- even Zelda's doing that now, like, yeah. uh, like I said in the last one. But um, it, it isn't just that stuff. Uh, there's a ton of little things to collect and things like that that I mostly ignore. But it, they are actually starting to give better rewards for doing all the different stuff. That's cool. Um, like, if you want to unlock all the different, um, like, unique weapons in the game, uh, the only way to really do it is to do a lot of the side, side missions and get the collectibles and things like that. That's so, kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, that that's kind of what I'm more after in that kind of game than uh, the main storyline. The main storyline is, you know, it's serviceable. Uh, uh, it's, it's, and, you know, well, not only that, but, like, if you got all the cool stuff in the main storyline then what are you going to do with the side missions other than just take up more time? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, like, a lot of, a lot of games don't realize that, unfortunately. Yeah. So, um... I mean, uh, like, well, like, with Yakuza, there's an actual canon to a bunch of the side missions. But, I mean... Like, that's, that's a rare thing, though. I can see both ways. If, if there's cool stuff in the side quests, but let's say you're a person who wants to beat the main game first, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. might beat the main game and say, well, there's there's nothing why am i still playing the side quests i already beat the game i don't need anything Mm -hmm. but then there's so that's why someone would not have a lot of stuff in the side quests but then on the other hand i can see why they would uh i I think the best way what i'm trying to say is have it just be like extra story stuff or cool things that you don't need um that wouldn't really affect you being the main game anyway. Well, no, oh, that, that, no. That, that's it, where I was going to go. Yeah, like you, like the side quests, if you beat them all or whatever. Like, uh, again, Yakuza, you, you can beat the main game and you can buy and upgrade whatever weapons you want 
without doing the side quests, but only if you do all the side quests and then beat the Secret Amon mission do you get the stupidly overpowered gun that breaks the entire game, but you've al- you've already, like, just before the final boss anyway, so it's not like you even ruin the rest of your gameplay experience. Like, mm-hmm. that's the way I like it, because, like... You don't like you don't need to get some stupid super powerful weapon in the main story. Like you should be able to beat the main story without that kind of stuff. The side quests are just for if you want to have like, like just maybe just the final boss is really easy or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, in this game, uh, a lot of the side missions have interesting characters. Like I, I just m- met like a really flamboyant um, like costume designer, huh. <laughs> and uh, he's you know he's he's funny. Uh, and he's, he's clearly making your character uncomfortable by, like, just being himself in front of you, and he's mm-hmm. just being very handsy, and he's, your main, the main character's like, uh, 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 like, uh, like, stop getting close to me, uh, like, it's just kind of funny, uh, but he, he, he's like, uh, the, uh, costume designer is like, flirting with you, and, and stuff like that, and, mm-hmm. and the main character's clearly uncomfortable with it, and it's just kind of funny, because you're, you're like, you're like a prisoner to the um, to the perspective, so it, it, it's kind of cool like that. Yeah, there, there, um, that reminds me of No More Heroes Two. Did the exact opposite of that, where whenever you would go between levels, there would be like really zoomed in like chest shots of Sylvia when you're talking to her, yeah. and the player is kind of stuck in that perspective because sorry, mm-hmm. you're playing as this pervert and you're seeing what he sees. Deal with it. So like. The game's kind of making fun of the player for playing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm I'm enjoying it. Um, uh, like like I said, it it it's kind of um, a minor upgrade in, in a lot of ways, but I, I am enjoying it. it. It's it's certainly uh, providing a better experience than uh, Mad Max did uh, when I played that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Mad Max felt very rushed. Uh, it didn't feel like there was enough content for the, um, uh, for the amount of game that was there, uh, for the amount of, uh, uh, regions and things like that. There, it, like, the, 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 the mission types kept repeating, uh, and, uh, there weren't enough, there wasn't, just wasn't enough variety for the size of game. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's ironic that, at least as far as video games are concerned, like, all of the derivatives and the things that were inspired by Mad Max are superior to Mad Max. <laughs> well, in, in the video game, at least. You yeah, know, in the like, video uh, game, like, like Fallout. Yeah. You know, the, oh, yeah. the Fallout video game is better than the Mad Max video game. As far as movies, yeah. Mad Max is fucking king. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say... Um, well, there's the, no Fallout movie. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. Uh, but, yeah, the the... The Mad Max video game is very much patterned off for Shadow of Mordor, but it's a much, uh, uh, very much a rushed version of it. Like, mm. like even though Shadow of Mordor came out before it, you'd have a much better time playing it. Uh, so, uh, and it's another one of these open world like unlock it as you go kind of games. Sure. Um, so anyway, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm playing more of Cuphead. Cuphead. Uh, now this is a really good game to play because you could basically play it in bites uh bites mm-hmm. because yeah. you uh basically um each each boss battle uh, a lot of the game is just a boss battle like you you go into a level and it's just a boss battle and trying yep. to figure out that one uh boss's pattern um and i i usually i i die quite a bit but then i end up like really mastering um the battle when I do it, I usually get like a high ranking, so I've been really happy with that. But I've been like beating it very steadily, <laughs> and I don't. I want it to last. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it, it's it's a it's a good game, but I I the reason why I'm beating it is because I'm persistent, right? It, 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 it it's meaty enough. I'm I'm just uh, this is like my favorite type of, of does thing. it does it like save after every boss or before yes. every boss? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean it. So, like, it has kind of like a Super Mario World overworld, mm-hmm. and uh, e- e- each boss is a location on the map. Gotcha. So, it, it saves when you, when you go in. Yeah, is there, like, a level leading up to the boss, or is it so just the boss? There are platforming levels. Uh, they are labeled as such. Uh, mm-hmm. And the platforming levels are there so you can collect coins. The coins are the RPG mechanic in the game. Um, the coins can be used to uh, purchase items at the shop, uh, or different 
weapons at the shop um, uh, and different configurations. So the you know uh, the the RPG progression is is tied to the platforming levels. Gotcha. Um, but they're all labeled as such. Uh, so so there are three types of levels that I've found so far. There's a regular boss battle, which is, uh, and then there's the platforming running gun levels that are kind of like um, Contra or or, or uh, you know Metal Slug. Yeah. Um, and then there are um, the flying levels, so they're kind of like a shmup. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like um, you know what it's like. It's like um, Super Mario Land. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, the platforming mm. levels are more like running gun type levels, like like Contra. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, I was I was just speaking yeah. of the plane levels. Those are like the, mm-hmm. the the plane levels or the submarine levels in Mario Land on the Game Boy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, it's not as difficult as like uh, like you know like a cave shmup or something like that. But yeah, uh, the the boss battles are really fun and really entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, I'm gonna continue with that, and I I, ho- I hope to really. Um, enjoy the, and, and play the hell out of that game. I'm, I'm going to do everything you can in it. Um, and I'm, I've also been playing more of Metroid Samus Returns. Um, my my first impression of the game kind of still stands. It, it has some cool things about it. Um, for instance, there are a lot of subtypes to each um, version of the Metroids. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we talked before that there are, like, basically four different types of Metroid mm-hmm. in this game. And uh, the the um, there are subtypes within it. Like, there are, there's, like, a lava version. There's a there's an electric version of, the, of these. And that's kind of cool. I, I, I like that. I, I also like the combat in the game. And I also like that there are a lot of really cool details in the backgrounds. Um, so there, there will be different things going on in the background, uh, in the, in the level while you're playing it. Uh, some of them related to bosses you will fight later, like the boss will be lurking in the background, that kind of thing. That's cool. Yeah, I like stuff like that. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Um, my major criticism of the game is that it, um, is kind of barren in terms of enemy types. Uh, and I, I was having that problem with it in the beginning but i thought maybe you know it would it would continue to spice up but now mm-hmm. there are like starting to be like palette swap versions of those enemies oh, later on. On. yeah and it's just like man i'm already halfway through this game and you're you're throwing you're throwing palette swaps at me so um it feels like the game could have been baked longer mm-hmm. um, maybe if it was an internal um Nintendo game, it would have been a lot better. Uh, but this was made by Mercury Steam. I don't know if you guys knew this or not. No. And mm-hmm. Mercury, Mercury Steam was uh, the company that made the last three Castlevania games before uh, the Lords of Shadow games. Oh. Yep. Uh, so it, uh, somebody pointed out that they are the only true uh, Metroidvania company. They're the only company that's made Metroid and Castlevania. Oh, that's kind of funny. Um, so... Uh, it's it's okay. It's good, but it, it's it's no AM2R. AM2R is a superior game. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I also want. Uh, I'm gonna continue playing it because I, I love Metroid and I love you know that type of game. Uh, but and you know who knows? Maybe it'll improve. Uh, maybe it'll have a really boss version of uh, of the 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 final Metroid. Um, uh, that's and, what I'm most curious about because that yeah. even on the original Game Boy, that boss was crazy. Yeah, the version in AM2R was epic. It mm. was really, really cool. Um, but anyway, I did want to give a, a quick vinyl update. Uh, Lotus uh, saw this last time he was at my place, uh, and yes. I didn't mention it last time. But I, I got a couple uh, new vinyls, uh, music, uh, video game music related. Uh, one of them was... Uh, I, I had gotten the... Uh, second volume of this a little while ago it was the darius soundtrack uh, because oh I love, cool i love darius um but it was actually the number two in in a, a volume of zuntata uh uh um vinyl albums so zuntata is the taito house band uh that um basically creates all of taito's um arcade soundtracks Mm-hmm. Kind of like the Konami Kukeka Club, and um, the Falcom has their own um, band as well. 
uh, that that basically collaborates. It's basically the sound programmers, but they all like work on games and collaborate with each other. So it's kind of like a band. So uh, the first volume has a smattering of games on it. It's like a collection. It comes with Metal Black, which is kind of like a almost like a Darius game. Almost that like is it. such a freaking cool name. Yeah, and uh, Elevator Action Returns, which is one of my favorite nice. games. I love that game. Um, there's one other one. I think it's called Night Striker, uh, which is kind of like a, almost like a an Outrun or 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 um, kind of like a combination between Outrun and um, Space Harrier. It's kind of fun game. Uh, the other one, uh, the, these two were kind of obscure, so I kind of like talking about them. Uh, the other one was uh, the Adventures of Bayou Billy game yeah. final, <laughs> which um, is not the best game in the world, especially if you play the American one. Um, yeah. In fact, I would say it's bad. Yeah, um, as, yeah like the, like the the American version of the game, for the record, the game's okay, but it, it's hard to the point of not being fun. Like, yeah. uh, unless you really apply yourself, like, you, like this, is, this is the game that you're going to be good at, you're not going to beat it. Like, it's bullshit. Like, I was watching, for, for context, I was watching a, a Games Done Quick speedrun of Bio Billy, which I couldn't believe existed, but it did. Jesus. And, yeah. no, but there was a part, like, you know how you can pick up some weapons, like, some guys drop sticks or whips or whatever? Like, yeah. th- the speedrunner, like, the guy who's been playing this game, I don't even know how many hours to get speedrunner quality. The guy was saying during the run, by the way, if these guys kill me right now and I lose the whip, then the run's basically over. Because like I, I can't, yeah. I can't recover from that. I'm like, wow! Like th- if this guy can't recover from it, then th- what are the rest of us gonna do? <laughs> so you basically need to play the Famicom version because they f- they messed with the difficulty. But yeah. anyway, um, and it's not even that great um, to begin with. But it has amazing music. Yeah, music's pretty good. And, <laughs> um, uh, I just like the the novelty of owning a vinyl of of by billy <laughs> it's so it's just kind of funny and it, it has this like pixelated ver- like face of by billy which looks like paul hogan you know the guy from uh um uh crocodile, crocodile dundee. dundee movies so yeah by billy just, just is crocodile dundee like straight up yeah yeah um and i'm probably going to end up uh, ordering the cuphead soundtrack because it's nice badass. Um, yeah, and I, uh, by the way, Pyro, I don't know if you've seen what the Cuphead soundtrack looks like, but it has, I have not. It is gorgeous. It like it, it looks like I can't see music. Uh-huh. No, it, it looks like you know old timey <laughs> records, but like it, like the design is such that that it just looks like a set of records. It's like in the a 30s. folio too. Like it's yeah. in like a book, like a like a leather. I gotta I gotta check book. that out. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it has like four albums. Uh, oh wow! And, and like yeah, it, yeah the soundtrack's very than I thought. <laughs> yeah, no, and the jazz is like amazing. It's really yeah. good. Although I guess it makes sense that the soundtrack's bigger than I thought because every, you know, every, every, every level its own thing. Music. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, th- this game is a labor of love. Uh, every uh, uh, there's so much detail put in every little bit of it. There's no repeats of anything. Yeah. Every th- background is unique. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, we mentioned this, but these guys literally drew and mm-hmm. like animated. I think I think they from what I read somewhere I think they colored with Photoshop but they but they drew and animated all of it like actually drew and and with the, by the way this is a little bit of a tangent but um do you guys know about the uh, the YouTuber uh, Lazy Game Reviews yes nope. oh well um Pyro what he does is he reviews a bunch of old games but he also goes into old like hardware and tech because he's a super nerd for like retro technology but just because he could. He uh, hooked Cuphead up to a black and white CRT, and <laughs> man, that look works. The game actually yeah. has a black and white mode anyway, but like, but that look the, just really works. Screen. Yeah, that looks mm-hmm. brilliant. Um, and and that's pretty much it. I mean, for 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 my section, but uh, I, I I did a lot um this this week, and I, I plan on actually beating these games. So um, uh, kind of. Kind of starting what I finished mm-hmm. uh, instead of just noodling around with different things. So Sure. Uh, we should move on to a question here. Why? Yes. Uh, this this is dangerous territory. Uh, Sabrina, <laughs> Hengel, Sabrina Hengel had asked a question last time, but there were like two questions in one. So here's the second one. If all of you had to describe each other with one word, what would be the first thing that comes to mind? Hmm. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. 
Who wants to go first with this one? I don't know. Pro- pro- probably for Vice, I would go with Charismatic, because, like, it's always his, Aww. like, forefront. Like, that's, like, that's always his, like, go-to. You know, you of... don't get paid for doing this, right? <laughs> okay. Ch- change <laughs> my answer are. to asshole. Yeah. No, um, no for, for real, though, because he, he, like, he, he has that, like, you know, pleased to meet ya, like, presidential candidate handshake kind of thing going on, like, all the time. Oh. But, like, he actually keeps the attitude going. Shit-eating grin. Uh, maybe maybe, had, maybe yeah, not that far. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, I would say that... Um, for for Lotus, I would say that... I'm, I'm trying to look for a... Hermit. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm going to say um, Particular. Oh, yeah, that's that's I was gonna say something along that's those lines fair. too. Um, yeah. per, per, but but I was I was I was trying to think of a good way of saying particular per, uh, because persnickety? because it, it, persnickety is kind of like uh, that's he's he's annoying about it. Um, <laughs> it, it well. It's kind of it, you're 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 very um, I don't know. It's one of your loving qualities. That that that's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, when when I when I think of you, I'm like uh, he want, he's very exact. Like like uh, when it. When I know that we're planning something, I know this is how I have to come at it because otherwise <laughs> you'll get you'll get frustrated with with planning it. So. Oh yeah, I don't. Yeah, like I usually prefer to let other people plan things, but if I ever do it, then yeah, I, I can. Like I I don't like I don't at least I don't think it gets to the point where like I alienate the people I'm with, but like I do I do get very uh like narrow minded about it. I think. Yeah, I mean, f- f- not to sound like uh, I'm copying, but I was gonna, I was trying to find a similar, nice way of saying that you're really exact about things and mm, nitpicky. That, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, again, I, it, it's nitpicky, but it's not like annoyingly nitpicky. Oh, well, that really. whether or not you've made the plans, like you're really big on time and. Like yeah. making sure things happen when they're supposed to happen. I think and, I get. I'm, I mean, I'm, you're I'm, you're time. not exact about your direction, uh, your sense of direction. But. No, yeah. no. For for time, I think <laughs> I think I get the time from my mother. Actually, um, I I get really anal about deadlines, and like mm. my mom was always the kind of person like we gotta get ready to go when it's like literally a half hour before we really should get going, just to be sure. Gotcha. So I think I picked up some of that. Um. For, uh, for pyro, I'm sure like there, there's like there's an educational word I want to use for this, like because like you were you were both a teacher and like the programmer, and now you're in like the. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say you were very logical. Yeah, like I, I was I was thinking of something like either educational or like some degree of like authoritative responsibility. If you could put that <laughs> into a word, like I can get anal about my stuff, but pyro is actually a professional about it. <laughs> maybe, that's maybe, 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 that's the, maybe that's the word right there professional professional yeah. i'm a professional yeah because i know that i can be very anal about things too but it's more like i mean i think my problem is i'm too organized at times yeah and you're very organized <laughs> to to a fault like one story that i tell people to prove how organized at a fault a fault am i don't like to use ocd because i actually knew someone who had ocd you know OCD and will she, didn't, with your life. she didn't mind she didn't mind people like joking about it but once i knew someone who had it it kind of gave meaning to you the phrase that i would have never like thought of before but uh so I, the, the second time i was going to japan with a friend i had to take a plane or we were taking a plane at like five in the morning so i was like you know what it's i should go to bed at the latest let's say 10 o'clock to get like seven hours of sleep mm-hmm. but it was like 9 nine thirty, and i was finishing packing up and i'm like oh let me bring my my iPod or whatever MP3 player I had because that's what it was back then. It wasn't my phone that I would use. And I'm like, you know what? Let me look at my music, download some music. Wait a second. These like t- track titles and artists and like track numbers aren't right. So let me start changing these. <laughs> and I organized every single song on my MP3 player so they had the right track name, the right track title. They all matched up. They all the their album <laughs> title, their um, album number or the, the CD number, the track number, and I was up until like one o'clock in the morning. Oh, or, no. So I got like three, like three or four hours of sleep before my sixteen-hour plane ride. Mm. See, see, I, I, I'm like that as well. But like, the thing is, I know that about myself, and I know I get exhausted when I'm like that. So 
a lot of times I'm a very much an extremes kind of person. So mm. like I'm either incredibly organized or incredibly disorganized as a result. Like I, I have no in between. Yeah. Um, be- because like I don't know how to switch. I, I don't have a an analog dial. You know, like it's it, it's on or off. And like if I'm on, it, I'm like so lost in my own bullshit. Mm. Uh, so and I, like. I, I feel like I'm very disorganized. I appear to be very disorganized sometimes, but then every once in a while you'll be like, "Wow, he put a lot of effort in that." <laughs> and like Lotus, yeah. you were saying that you got that the time management, let's say from your mom. I got my organization from my dad. He's not as bad as me, but uh, we like to say about ourselves is we're not necessarily clean, but we're organized. Like okay. when I lived by myself, I wouldn't clean my apartment as often as I should let's say, but it would be organized to the T. And I actually enjoy I mean, all it. the dust would be in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I would like, I enjoy organizing things. Like I would sit and organize my books or organize files on my computer just like because, <laughs> but then it's like, after I'm done and I had fun doing that, I'm like, well, shit, there's like two hours of my day that I'm not going to get back. Oh, but yeah. I guess I kind of enjoyed it while I was doing it. There's like some- I would actually also organize when I would go grocery shopping with my mom. I would organize the displays at the checkout counter. <laughs> oh, wow. No, see, it's like for, wow. for me, you would have to drag me kicking and screaming to get me to start organizing my stuff. But when I do, like, I, like if, if I must do it, then I'll find that I kind of get into it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I'll, I'll be lost for hours, like, organizing my bookshelf perfectly if left to my own devices. But, like, otherwise it's just, a free for all on there, mm. yeah, like like yeah. uh, I, I could spend a whole day looking at that and being like, "What's the best way? What's <laughs> mm. a, like, how should it uh, should it be by author? Yeah, it should be by author. Oh, but then I have to look at the publication dates. <laughs> you 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 can, you can see a clear progression. You can see a pl- clear progression when you read them. But this is only for me, so why do I care? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, almo- <laughs> I'm almost like that with my video games sometimes, where it's like. Should I do this alphabetically? But but wait a minute, this game is clearly a sequel to that one. I want to be able wait, to find Super it sometime C today. Super C doesn't come after Contra. Ugh, I bullshit. do it. I do my games and books by like interest in the series, and then once I in in that series in order or in like the order that yeah. I think of. I don't because like, alphabetical like, be taking a bit too far for me. Well, that, that's the thing. Like, should should I do like alphabetically, like Dragon Guard three? Near near automata. Or should I do it in chronological near Dragon Guard other near? It's like wait a minute. Or like I'll do it by size. Like my books are sometimes size order. Like if I have multiple size books on the same shelf, I might do it oh, size yeah. order just so it has that nice yeah, look aesthetic. to it. Yeah. Uh, so the other thing is I didn't give a word for vice, and I wouldn't necessarily use the word charismatic, but presence. Definitely, okay. you have a presence. Like when you're in a room, people know you're there. That's true. Really? Yes. Yeah, you're really usually the life that. of the party, even if you're not if the not one just because the you, party. you, especially when you laugh, then people know you're there. <laughs> yeah, um, the, many people and, and many people independently of me have uh, and independently of each other have told me that during during my annual uh, party, like my my barbecue, um, they can't they can't find us in the woods but they hear me and yep. they can get to yeah. me yep <laughs> I, I mean i know where, i know where to park cuz i know what lot it is but like sometimes i'm like are are we in the right spot and then i hear you <laughs> and i'm like yes yeah we are in the right <laughs> there we spot. go there we go the grill master over here <laughs> yeah uh yeah thank you thank you um uh, so uh, i never never really thought of it like that thanks i appreciate that especially yeah. considering somebody who who has a, like a social anxiety disorder? It's really good to to know that like my work towards that. Uh, has been <laughs> yeah, and good, and by so the way, uh, like whether or not you knew this, the good news is that like it does not look like you're overcompensating. It's like okay, this guy's clearly trying to be like that. Like it actually comes off as natural. Well, it it, it didn't always used to be like that. Like mm. uh, it's been a lot of fine tuning over the years and a lot of introspection. So okay. it, it uh, there was a try hard Andrew error. I mean mm. there 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 absolutely was. Okay, um, but uh, you know it's it's just one of those things. You you know you grow up and you you do soul searching and you, mm-hmm. know, you just you, you you gradually learn how you want to be. You know. Yeah, and then yeah. sometimes you realize all those things you worried about when you were a kid are like not non issues, but not as big of an issue as you really yeah, expected. Trivial. And then you realize that like. 
you the friends you made are the ones who like you no matter who you are yeah. so Th- that's the whole thing like does it really matter if the asshole doesn't respect <laughs> me it's like you know well, wait a minute wait a minute you're not I, trying, I, trying to win with here, everyone you know? yeah you're not trying to win with everyone yeah. or yeah. the other way to think about it if the asshole does respect me that might be saying a bad thing about me. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, true. Well, I mean, and, and also maybe, maybe not, but don't have especially guts. if you were actively yeah. trying to conform to that person's standards, though. It's like, do you really want to be whoever that person is? Yeah, yeah. It, it's like, uh, you know, if you are actively trying to get everybody's favor, then you really don't have a sense of self, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and I, it, you don't have a set, set of principles that you'd be like, hey, wait, this is wrong. Like, I need to get out of here. Yeah, like, I mean, we've seen on, like, on like every children's cartoon ever made, there's always that, <laughs> and every live-action, like, kids show, there's always that one, like... So, you're going to be with the cool kids? Like, you're going to smoke a cigarette? Or you're going to, like, steal something from <laughs> Mr. Neighbor's yard? Like, like it's like, you know, oh, you shouldn't you shouldn't be like those people. Like, like, it's just every single time. But, like, I don't know how many people really... I mean, everybody gets it, but I don't know how many people really, like, absorb that and, like, into their own lives until maybe later. I mean, not that, not that we need to talk about this too much, but it, it's... I think everyone gets it. It's just hard to act upon it because yeah. if you are that kid who has few friends and one of the cool kids comes up to you and says like, hey, if you like do this bad thing, then you can be part of our group. Like it's 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 a it's a big incentive for that yeah. kid who might want more friends, especially when you're younger mm-hmm. and a lot of your life revolves around how not necessarily popular you are, but how many how, people you're how, friends how with. How others and, perceive you. Yeah, mm-hmm. how others perceive you. So I, I can see it. I can see kids understanding the whole the, the the meaning behind that, but when it when it's when it happens to them in real life, it has a different meaning to them. Yeah, it is harder yeah. to like. Well, I mean, you already said act on, but yeah. <laughs> well, I I think that that uh, that was good. That was uh, a that very was good deep, ending. a very deep yeah. ending. Yeah, man. <laughs> but uh, I, I I think. Um, in in a lot of ways, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of our friend group has a, has a lot of similar traits too. Um, We're all weirdos. Just, yeah. <laughs> yep. I I mean that we we have a, a, a certain uh, je ne sais quoi. quoi. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So anyway, there's um, proof that we're friends. <laughs> yeah. Right. Definitely. Definitely. You can tell that we 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 are like each other. Um, but uh, that is the show for this week. We want to thank all of our fans who contributed questions. Please keep us supplied with awesome topics by submitting questions of your own via the YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While there, please give us thumb thumbs ups. I, I always hate that thumbs ups, likes, yeah. and five star ratings on iTunes. It helps us promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can Isn't also- it thumb ups? <laughs> No, because uh, multiple thumbs. You give a <laughs> thumbs up. Like, you always give a thumbs up, right? Yeah. Yeah. You never give a thumb up. Like, True. nobody says that. True. I'm not, I'm not giving you a thumb up. That just sounds gross. Now, right? let's, now let's talk about the runners <laughs> up and the surgeons general. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll get our comeuppance. Um, <laughs> you can catch us on Thursdays on our sister podcast, Reactive Consciousness, the in depth podcast about our this week in our lives. Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, and Twitter. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And Thumbs finally, up if while you're interested you in seeing. Up. What was it? <laughs> We can give you a thumbs up while hitting you Yeah, up. maybe even do both of those things. And uh, finally, <laughs> if you're interested in seeing some of my videos early or getting on an exclusive live streams or even selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, then maybe consider swinging by my Patreon, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprince. And you can find me as PyroJackFrost or Cloud08540 on Battle.net, Steam, and PSN. All right, everybody. Catch you on Thursday. Until next Bye-bye. time, Bye-bye.